Hello, good morning and welcome to St Francis Church. My name's Sarah and I'm the minister here and it is lovely to see your lovely smiley faces in front of me this morning. Uh, now a special welcome once again if you're listening on Outreach Radio. And let me just correct a mistake I made last week. I called Rich Lawrence by the wrong name. Rich, I'm so sorry. Um, and we were talking about wild swimming, weren't we? And Rich was saying, tell them I live really near the sea. I'm not going miles just for a dip. Well, mate, this morning you are super welcome to go for a dip. It is freezing out there. Let's talk about the weather. A special hello to you. If the thunder woke you up this morning, give me a wave. If that ridiculous, yeah, it woke all of us up this morning. Cliff said, is that thunder? I thought, gosh, if it's not thunder, something really bad has just happened. But mercifully, it was thunder. And I am super excited about the snow this morning. I've got to tell you, it is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Uh, but, you know, it's fine if we can just stay in or go for a walk or the heating's on. Uh, it's not fine if you need to be travelling for work or what have you. And especially all you key workers out there who maybe have to go out in it a bit later. Why don't we start our service and let's just say a prayer for all those who have got to go out in the snow this morning. And then we'll join together in some prayers as we begin our service together. So let's pray. Our Lord God, thank you for the beauty of this morning. Uh, but we recognise the challenge as well and we do pray for all those who are cold this morning, uh, who have to go out, uh, particularly for those key workers who are going out in this weather uh, to keep us safe. And we ask that you would keep them safe even as they go out to work, that you would keep all those safe, particularly those working in the hospitals this morning, doing such a tough job, Lord. They are so much on our minds at this time and we pray that you would sustain them and give them all the energy and um, just all that they need this morning. And Lord, as we meet, would you uh, come by your Holy Spirit, join us together, though we are in different locations and enable us to meet with you this morning. Amen. Why don't we say our opening prayer together and declare our intention, if you like, as we meet together. Join with me if you're able to see the words in bold. If you can't see the words this morning because you're listening, then do just agree by saying an amen, maybe. So let's say together. We have come to seek you, O oh God, just as we are, we come. We have come to be sought by you. Just as we are, we come. I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits and in his word do I hope. So as we start our time together, we're going to sing an opening song of worship. It's one that Stephanie has put together for us. And it's, it's really appropriate for this morning. The opening words are all about who has told every lightning bolt where it must go. Uh, who has who's seen the storehouses laden with snow so what a wonderful start to our morning do join in and sing along thank you so much Oh, let 
As we start our time together why don't we just take a moment to recall the things that separate us from God things that we've done this week that have taken us further away from God rather than drawing us closer so let's have a brief time of quiet as we recall those things and then please do join me in the words that will come up on the screen let's pray And so let's say together, create a clean heart within me, O God, so that it may become your chosen shelter and the resting place of the Holy Spirit. I ask the living God of the universe that the light of lights banish my darkness so that I may live in the resurrection power of your love. And so I can proclaim that the journey from death to life is ours through Jesus Christ, by the strength, power and mercy of divine love. Wherever our path has taken us in the past, today is a new day in the eyes of the Lord. Let us live in it as children of light. And we're going to use a declaration of faith from the Iona community that we've been using a few times recently. And for me, it really resonates with the times of uncertainty that we're living in and helps us to both admit the times of uncertainty and frailty, but also to declare our trust in the one certainty that is God. And so let's join in the words of this declaration of faith. Lord, I will trust you. Help me to journey beyond the familiar and into the unknown. Give me the faith to leave old ways and break fresh ground with you. Christ of the mysteries, can I trust you to be stronger than each storm in me? I determine amidst all uncertainty always to trust. I choose to live beyond regret and to let you recreate my life. I believe you will make a way for me and provide for me if only I trust you. I will trust in the darkness and know that my times are still in your hands. I will believe you for my future, chapter by chapter, until all the story is written. And let's just say together the prayer for today, the third Sunday in Epiphany. It will appear on your screens or if you're listening, uh, again, just, um, just agree in your heart if you would like to. Let's say together, God of all mercy, your son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Well, we've come to that point in our service. I think it's the highlight for everybody each week. It's our junior church catch up slot. Uh, so why don't we find out what our junior church have been up to this week? Thanks, Debbie. Welcome to this week's Junior Church Feedback. I'm just working on a few finishing touches for the forthcoming Junior Church plans. Did you enjoy our trip down memory lane just a minute ago? Now I'd like us to cast our mind back to around about five months ago 
when I did this junior church feedback slot. And our story this week was about how God had a plan for Joseph. As we know, Jacob had 12 sons, but Joseph was his favourite. So much so, he had a colourful coat made for him that Joseph just loved to show off. As you can imagine, much resentment and jealousy broke out Both from about the story this week. To quote one of our junior church members, Thank you Ian for reading this week's bedtime story. I really enjoyed it, but what happens next? We left it on quite a cliffhanger. Do you remember? Yes, it really does feel like it was a lifetime ago. But back by popular demand, we have Joseph with his dreams. Now the children are dead keen to find out what happens next with Joseph. And that, to be fair, have been extremely patient with waiting to find out what happens with that cliffhanger. So over the next three weeks, we're going to be continuing the story of Joseph with the help and support from Becca and Ian Clark. Now our children this week have been making prisons out of lollipop sticks, like you do, so that their wooden puppets can go in and out of prison. We've learned that even when it got really hard and difficult for Joseph, he still put his trust and faith in God and that God had a plan for him. So I'll leave you with a few photos of our junior church members enjoying their craft activities and I'll be back next week for part three of Joseph. And I really can't wait to find out what happens next too. Have a good week. Ah, fantastic. That's so fun. Thank you so much, Debbie, as ever. And if you were, if you're listening on the radio and you're uh, wondering what you missed, you did miss out some great pictures there. So please do go and have a look at our website a bit later where you'll be able to find that on our service. Our website is stfrancis-valleypark.org.uk and the service will be up there a little bit later. Well, uh, we have a number of teachers in our congregation and, you know, we're really mindful of the pressures that you guys are under. Um, we keep praying for you, uh, but it's really great to have an update from one of them. And Joe, who's our curate, uh, took a bit of time this week to find out how Ian was doing. Uh, so we're going to have a listen in on their conversation. Hi there, Ian. Hi, Joe. How are you? Yeah, OK, thanks. Um, thank you for joining me today for a, for a quick chat. Um, for those watching who may not know you, uh, could you just introduce yourself a bit and tell me what you do during the week? Yeah. Hi, I'm Ian. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a secondary school teacher. Uh, I'm an assistant head teacher at a school in Waterlooville, which is just north of Portsmouth. Great. And um, so a few weeks ago on, on, on that Monday evening, we were suddenly put into another lockdown. How did that impact you personally and the people around you at your work in your school? Um, I think the reality is that uh, perhaps we weren't surprised, but it was quite stressful because having spent a day planning for students to return the following day and have lateral flow tests and teaching lessons, uh, we suddenly were plunged into how, what provision are we going to have to give them? So it became quite a busy evening of emails and phone calls. And um, as, as lots of people were that night from work, um, and then a, a very early Tuesday morning so that we were set up ready to teach online to all students on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, and so, so stressful, I think. I mean, I think some, some people thrive on that, others don't, and, and some of my colleagues find that harder. And so our job as, as the leadership team is to be really clear on what we expect and really clear on, on making sure we had a plan. So our evenings was probably quite busy making sure we yeah. knew everyone else would be okay the next day. Yeah, sure. Um, now, often we see in the Gospels how Jesus brings good out of 
out of a bad situation. How have you seen God working in your challenging situation at school? I think um, <clears throat> I've seen God quite a few times, two very specific examples, one from just before Christmas. We, we were part of, as lots and lots of people were around the country, the kind of we wanted the, the Marcus Rashford campaign for free school meals. Um, we um, knew that our students, we had a number of students, we got about a thousand students and we have about a third of those students receive free school meals. So we contacted all parents in all years and said we wanted to support that and we wanted to make sure that every child had a hamper of food, every family over Christmas. And, um, and people uh, came, and so from that, we had about 150 families saying they'd really appreciate anything that we could give them. So out of about 300 and something, we had about 150 who asked. Um, and then a lot of other parents just donated money uh, on online into the school that enabled us to buy it. We also contacted our local supermarket and I will name them because they were a fantastic Morrisons who gave us three deliveries of excess of several hundred pounds worth of food. Wow. They bought it all in uh, and we were able to send out um, 150 hampers with 12 days of food in for 150 families and if a family had three children they got three enough for three children's work so um so that was fantastic just the outpouring of love staff supplied food um i went to asda one night and bought chocolate oranges for all these hampers so that was an interesting trolley to push to ASDA, <laughs> 150 chocolate and they just look at you and you kind of go it's for school <laughs> <laughs> i think i bought one loaf of bread as well because we needed bread and that was quite <laughs> um so that was brilliant. And then now we're back. Uh, those same families are the same families that don't have computers and don't have laptops. And we've actually had two families who literally turned up on the, the school doorstep uh, and given us brand new computers who bought laptops for children less fortunate than their own. Um, and I just think that, that people's love and uh, support for others is just phenomenal. And yeah. so um, when you see that, I, I can't help but seeing Jesus acting in those individuals' lives. I, I think it's just that's the reality. That's brilliant. Thank you. So, thank, yeah. you thank you for sharing that. Um, and how, how do you think we can pray for you at the moment? How can we help in that way? I think, um, I mean, I think that, that therefore there are obvious, uh, there are obvious needs for a number of families, not just here in Waterloo, though there will be in Chandler's Ford and, and the surrounding areas. Um, and so I think there's a lot of young people at home having to homeschool your children at home homeschooling mine are in a combination of home and at school um but those those children are missing their social interactions and i think we should pray about that because that yeah. will be affecting how their mood is we should be praying for their families because their, their mood will dictate the mood of the households yeah. um, and especially perhaps as they get older um i think Teaching staff across the, the, the area have been phenomenal in picking up new technologies, uh, delivering lessons in very strange and unusual circumstances. And so we should pray for all of them uh, doing that. Um, uh, and I think those, those three things are absolutely key at the moment because things are changing every day. Just today, I'm looking at the consultation about GCSEs and that's yet another thing we're going to have to adapt to and change and, and, and do it. And so prayer for, that prayer for that wisdom and that that, that certainty it, that God provides that he, there is something bigger, something certain. Uh, there is a marker boy out in the in, in the sea. But at the moment, it's a choppy sea for all of us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, but those of us here uh, are, are trying to manage it as best we can. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, let's let's pray. Let's just pray okay, quickly. Loving Father, thank you for your son Ian and all he does in the school where he works. Um, please continue to support support him and his staff and the people he works with. Support him and the, in courage and and wisdom, and help him be your ambassador. And we pray that he. He is also your salt and light in that community. We pray for the wisdom to know how to lead um, the school forward in this situation. And we also pray for the, um, for the families of the children who need support in the situations that they're in. In 
in Jesus name. Amen. And uh, I believe there's um, there's also a birthday coming up in your household this weekend. There is a very important celebration in uh, in my household this weekend that we none of us will be remembering. In fact, on so it is today. It, it's a very big celebration today. Okay. Well, happy birthday to Becca, and uh, <laughs> thanks for um, sharing that with us today. And yeah, that's no problem. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you so much to Ian and to Joe. That's great to hear what's going on, Ian. Um, Ian sent me an update to say that they've now had over 40 laptops donated, new and used. And he says, uh, this was a few days ago, we still have about 30 kids needing something. And Ian, I wonder, I know you're listening, could you just put in chat if there's something that we can still be doing? And I'll read it out in the notices. If if we can be giving laptops or money for laptops, uh, could you just put that in chat, Ian, and I'll read that out so we can all contribute if we want to um, a bit later on. Thank you. And so good to hear what you're up to. And we hold you and our other teachers that we know and love in our congregation and wider families uh, before God at this time. We are coming to our Bible reading now and Heather is going to read for us. Thanks, Heather. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. The reading is taken from John chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves a good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Heather. And now Steve is going to talk for us this morning. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, we are going to be looking at the wedding at Cana and the God's overflowing love for us. But first, let's pray. Lord, take my words and speak through them. Take our thoughts and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I don't know how many of you have been on a treasure hunt. You know, the ones where you have to get each clue in order to, which signs you to the next clue and so on until you get to the treasure. Well, the wedding at Cana, which has just been read to us, gives us the first clue or the sign as to who Jesus really is and what the treasure is at the finish. In fact, you could think of John's gospel as a treasure hunt with various clues being carefully shown to us. I have to admit, even if some of the clues can be cryptic to say the least. But before we look at the clue, let's look at the story itself. Weddings at that time and in that part of the world were usually celebrated for several days and were a community celebration which is probably why Jesus, the disciples, and his mother were invited. 
everything was going fine until the host realizes they're running short of wine. Now that in those days was a significant problem and probably still is today at weddings. To run short of wine would be a serious embarrassment for the host, the parents, the newlyweds. A community would remember for a long time the shame of a family that failed to provide adequate wine for the wedding. So Mary asks Jesus to help, which he eventually does, even if Jesus is a little bit hesitant, because he replies to the request from Mary, what concern is this to you or me? Now, I'm not quite sure how many of us would have answered our parents in, in such a way or our mothers in such a way. But perhaps Mary could see that this was going to be a major source of embarrassment for the host. And Jesus could have been thinking about something else, something about the greater feast God is preparing for us. But then his mother says to the servants that they are to do whatever he tells them to do. So Mary was expecting Jesus to do something. A number of water jars have been set aside. We're told in the story about six. The water was to be used for the ceremonial washing of the people. And the total amount of water is estimated to be something like 120 to 180 gallons. That's a lot of water. What did the servants think? Probably thought Jesus was a bit crazy by asking for up to 180 gallons of water to be brought to him. But they would have probably wondered what this crazy carpenter was going to do with it all. But without questioning, they obeyed him and brought him the water and the miracle happened. We know from the story that a servant drew, drew some of what was water and now wine and gave it to the steward to test. The steward was astonished and asked the bridegroom why he had kept the best wine to last, it being the bridegroom's responsibility to provide the wine. We aren't told what the bridegroom said or the expression on his face when he was handed all this wine, knowing that the problem had been solved. But it's interesting to note also that while the steward and the bridegroom had no idea where the wine was come from, the servants did. They, as they had witnessed this miracle. But again, we're not told what their reaction was. So let's look a bit further into this story. With all the miracles that Jesus did, we see that he addresses the need of the situation. And then there was a deep, usually a deeper meaning to the miracle, a deeper point that Jesus wanted to make. Sometimes Jesus tells us what that deeper meaning is. Or sometimes he leaves us to work it out for ourselves, as is the case with this miracle. So let's have a little bit of a look at the story in a bit more detail. This was the first miracle sign that Jesus is recorded as doing. And that from all the miracles that Jesus did, there's a kind of a pattern to them. A setting is established. In here it's verses 1 to 2. A need arises, verses 3 to 5. A miracle addresses that need, verses 6 to 8. And there's a response to that miracle, verses 9 to 11. So let's have a look at first at the setting. The wedding setting. Imagery is used to symbolise God's eternal relationship with us. For example, we did read in the Bible... In Isaiah 5, chapter 54, Matthew chapter 22, uh, which is the parable of it. And in Revelation, we read, the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper. And again in Revelation, I saw the sitting out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. The next, a need arises. Well, in the story, it's fairly obvious the water, the wine was running out and something needed to happen. Something needed to change to avert an embarrassing situation. God wanted, and from this, God wants to have a different relationship with us, his people. Then a miracle addresses the need. The water is changed into wine, but not just any wine. We're told it's changed into the finest wine. 
God has done a very su su surprising thing. He has saved up till last his very best gift to the world. His best gift was not in the past when he gave Moses the law. He has kept the best wine until the coming of Jesus. And as one writer has put it, this then becomes a story about moving from the water of the law and the prophets to the wine of Jesus' grace. God is showing his overflowing love and mercy for us. And finally, there is a response to that miracle. Jesus tells us through, the, through this wedding miracle, John, sorry, John tells us that through this wedding miracle, Jesus revealed his glory. His disciples believed in him. They already believed in Jesus, but their faith in him had grown and had been strengthened. And don't forget, we're told that the jars were full to the brim, a symbol of the incredible grace and love available to us through Jesus, who has re revealed his glory to us. As John wrote, this was the first of many signs Jesus used to help the disciples and us to believe in his mission, his purpose on earth. Just as Jesus changed water into wine, he came to change us, to make us completely acceptable to God. A God who has an overflow of love for us, all of us. And I'd just like to leave you with one final point that when I was reading this passage a few times, it's a case of Mary asked, there was a problem, Mary asked Jesus to solve the problem. But then she, the problem could only be solved when somebody actually did something. So we are to seek Jesus in a difficult situation, as Mary did, but then we're meant to do whatever he tells us to do. Now that's a bit more of a difficult one. Mary told the servants to do what Jesus told them to do in chapter, five, in chapter two, verse five. This is something we need to do, whatever Jesus to, tells us to do. And here is the crucial bit. When Jesus comes up with a solution, we must have the courage and the obedience to follow his will. As Mary says here, do whatever he tells you. We can pray and talk to Jesus, but we have to be obedient to his will and response if we are to see our prayers answered. And if we allow ourselves to be open to him, he will reveal something more of, to us of who he really is. And through that, our faith, like the disciples' faith, will also be strengthened. So going back to the treasure hunt, we have seen today the first of the signs or the clues as to who Jesus is. And John's gospel, as in the other gospels, has many other signs. In fact, within John's gospel, there's seven signs. This was the first one. There are six other signs in John's gospel, which points to who Jesus really is. And the treasure, well, a big clue is given in today's reading as to what the treasure is. So maybe over the next following week, look into John's gospel, look for the other signs and see what the treasure really is. Or perhaps if you want to, use chat now just to say what you think the treasure is, what the treasure for you really is. There's no right, or, right answer or anything like that. If you just want to share what you think the treasure is, then please do use chat in the next few minutes and share your thoughts with all of us on that. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your message today. We thank you that your grace and love for us is overflowing. Thank you that we can bring all our troubles and problems to you. Help us now to be able to listen to you and obey your will. Father, we pray that you will come and change us now so that we are prepared for your heavenly banquet. Amen. Sarah. Thank you so much, Steve. And um, I'll read out a few of those um, from the chat uh, a little bit later. Um, but first, let's worship and just respond to what Steve's been saying. Um, particularly um, that uh, need to just say yes, if we want to, to what Jesus is offering. There really is no 
fuller life, uh, no better treasure uh, than to be found in Jesus. Let's sing together, Water You Turned Into Wine. that you would help us to remember that you are greater and stronger than higher than any other power and Lord we thank you for that amen and let's continue in prayer as Peter leads us in our intercessions let's all pray together father we do thank you indeed for your overwhelming generosity and grace to us thank you for how jesus modeled that throughout his life even starting with this uh, miracle that we heard about today father thank you for your over loving overflowing love for us we thank you too for the beauty of your creation that we've seen this morning in the snow the power and the awesomeness of all that is in in our planet and we praise you for the miracles that we see each day in each other's lives and the miracles of vaccines delivered and prepared in such a short time. But Father, in these difficult times, we want to bring to you our prayers of concern for our country and our world at the moment and those who we know. Father, we think of those who are at the forefront of coping with our, our pandemic. We think of those who are working in the NHS uh, working beyond their capability and capacity sometimes, but with all that strength that they have. And we just ask that you would protect and guide and protect and bless them in the work that they do. Give them the strength that they need to do work which is beyond them at times. Father, we just pray for your, your grace and your peace in every hospital uh, in our country. And for those who lead them and support and manage them we pray for uh, wisdom and insight and compassion there we pray for teachers and those who lead schools and for other key workers and we ask that you would help them in the challenges and uncertainties that they face to make good uh, decisions and to do the best they can uh, in educating 
uh, the next generation of our country. And we pray for our government with all that they face. Father, we pray for wisdom and insight that they would know how to lead us well. We pray for those who are affected, uh, whether that's financially or in their health or their education or in their work pressures. And at this time, we've also been asked to pray for those who have specific needs. Josh, whose father's ill with COVID, for Lauren, for Lynn, for Caroline. And for the family of Kate Moamar, whose funeral was, was this week. As we think of our local community, we've been asked to pray for those who live in School Lane and Carnarvon Gardens and Warwick Close. And Father, there are many more known to us personally who need your help at this time. And we would lift these people that we've mentioned, those who are in our hearts, and maybe we will name them now to God and lift people up who we know need his help at this time. Lord God, we pray that you would be with these people, be by their side, walk with them in these difficult times. Help them to know that you are God and that you have uh, a greater force and a greater power than the forces of this world. Finally, Father, we left it up to uh, the United States of America with the things that have gone on there this, this week uh, and the change in leadership there. We pray for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and all those who will bring a change of direction in the country. We pray that their role as global leaders would be restored. And we ask that you would uh, indeed bless them and be with them at this time. Finally, let's draw all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, which will be on your screens now. Uh, and let's say this together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks so much, Peter. And why don't we just continue in prayer as we give thanks for all that has been given. Lord God, thank you for all that's been given financially through bank accounts, through our collection plate. Actually, not so much there, but through the website, which is kind of the modern equivalent right now. Lord, you provide for all our needs and we are so grateful and we just thank you for that, Lord, and ask that all that is given would be used for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we uh, think about... Um, before we get into there's a couple of other notices but just before we do that let me read out uh, from our chat um, some of the treasure that people have found and somebody's mentioned complete acceptance in god somebody else the kingdom of god and um, the fact that god is always present and that jesus love is constant whether life feels easy or is a struggle god's love is with us when we go the wrong way, we're forgiven and helped back to the right path. All those things are treasures beyond uh, any earthly worth. Um, and that was uh, fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing the treasure that you find. And I want to update you on the laptop story as well. Um, first to say that uh, at my request uh, to Ian, you may have seen in chat, that Ian says that old laptops or money to buy them would be welcome. So um, I hope Ian doesn't mind me suggesting you get in touch directly with him in that regard. And I've just um, found out we've got another few teachers in the school and actually they are both primary school teachers. And really interestingly, um, Alison, uh, who's a head teacher, says uh, we got a delivery from the government and she's been busy dropping them off and our families are managing uh, with one per family and they're able to support that. And then Steph, who also works for a primary school, school, says we are very lucky to have 100 laptops from the government. Mm -hmm. So most of our vulnerable children have now been given laptops. I have felt everyone's prayers for teachers and pupils this week as I have finally managed to get every single child in my class logging on 
and submitting work on Google Classrooms. It felt like a big win this week. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. A oh, round of applause for that one. Steph, thanks so much for sharing that. And it's really helpful for us to hear how our prayers for teachers are being answered. So thank you so much for sharing. It encourages us to keep on praying. And I tell you what, guys, never has prayer been so important as it is at the moment. Let us keep praying for God's kingdom to come. And I guarantee you the darkness will shift. So let us not give up. Let us persist in prayer at this time. Other notices. Uh, most of the things that uh, we want to share are in our newsletter and you can find that on the um, website. Um, and um, if you want to get in touch, then the easiest way is just through Facebook Messenger. You can find our website and Facebook pages simply by searching St Francis Valley Park. Um, but just to uh, let you know that there's morning prayer on Zoom at 10 o'clock every Monday and you would be so welcome to join us for that. Please feel free. Um, we've got an international cafe at 10 o'clock on Thursdays, joining uh, with um, Frederick and uh, Marilyn in Strasbourg. So um, details in the newsletter there for a separate Zoom link. And of course, next Sunday, we'll be meeting together at 10. Um, and I look forward to seeing you then. And just that heads up that we're going to be doing a Lent course together. Um, more details soon, but it's a Lent course that I would love as many of possible of us to uh, just join in with. Uh, if you're not in a house group and you'd like to join in, we're able to put on an extra group or two. So please just drop me an email and uh, it would be so great to have you on board as we look to discover more about uh, how we fit into serving the kingdom of God uh, as um, we maybe look a bit forward. Maybe we look forward to the time when we're going to be meeting in person. Uh, where do we fit? Maybe it's changed. This is the perfect time to think a little bit more about that. So please do consider joining us. Why don't we have our final hymn, a wonderful hymn. Listen, if you guys don't ever stand up, this is the one to stand up and sing, all right? Full volume, to God be the glory. Why don't we stand and worship God together this morning? Thanks, Thank Stephanie. You. She's going to leave. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah.
it's great to worship God in that way, isn't it? And so a final blessing. And then if you'd like to stay on, if you're on screen, uh, we'll have breakout rooms as usual. You'd be so welcome there. It's signed randomly, as you know, uh, but it's always lovely to have a chat afterwards. So do feel free to join us for that. Our final blessing. When you no longer know how to be, may the Father take you on your deeper journey. When you no longer know what to do, may the Spirit reveal to you your fitting task. When all feels lost or foreign, may you know your home in Christ. On the path that is before you, may you have companions for the journey. May you find Christ in the stranger. And may the blessing and protection of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. And so let us go in peace to love, to serve the Lord and to enjoy some snow. Amen.